the ways that we battle one another, the ways there's so many differences and like we are all connected and we're all part of one another. And so our best thing that we can do is to walk with compassion, especially the parts that are uncomfortable. Right. Welcome to the very first Hello Saints podcast. My name is Jeff. This is my wife, Joy. Hello. And we are evangelicals. In fact, I'm a pastor originally from the Midwest, recently relocated out to Utah. And for the past couple of years, I have been creating content on YouTube exploring the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I'm going to get into the reasons why I am on this quest and why I'm taking the approach that I'm taking. I'd like my wife to have the opportunity to also share a little bit more about her story, how she's been experiencing this journey. And then we're both going to discuss sort of the, uh, the, tone. the tone and the dynamic and the approach of Hello Saints and how it even ties to our story a little bit and our background. So if you are discovering Hello Saints for the first time, just a little bit of background. I grew up in the St. Louis area, although my wife is from Buffalo, New York. We both grew up in evangelical homes, I mean, from birth. And some of my earliest memories, I don't know if you want to speak to this, are at church. Yeah, for sure. As a little kid, going to Sunday school, um, sitting underneath the pews, drawing on offering envelopes, doing all the things. Um, But both of us grew up in homes where our parents were just very intentional about making faith and church very much a part of who we are and what we do. Yeah. I think I accepted Jesus into my heart about seven or eight different times I went up front after Sunday school or yeah. at church, you know, when I was a little girl. Yeah. I would like get the little pamphlet that, many times. So I think I'm I think it, you're, you're good. like you're definitely saved. I'm yeah, I'm extra saved. Yeah. And for me, I don't know what it was like for you, but um my parents did a pretty decent job of almost allowing church to be sort of a stabilizing presence in our lives. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what was going on, that rhythm of going to church Focusing on the Bible, looking to Jesus was sort of a a rallying point constantly growing up. Yeah. And as a result, faith has just always been foundational to both of us. Mm -hmm. And as we then met one another in 2000 at a Christian college in the middle of Illinois, we didn't necessarily know that the path ahead of us would though we were at a Christian school and you grew up at a Christian school, was going to continue down a path of pastoral ministry eventually mm-hmm. for me. And uh, we were doing that full-time out of college. I mean, there was a few years where I was in the corporate world, but then we did uh, pastoral ministry for many years. And then during the pandemic, sort of had uh, a moment that I think a lot of us experienced where you kind of take a life inventory and you look around at like, what am I involved in? What am I doing? Why are we doing it this way? And for both of us, we just started to feel that though we had been kind of in a predictable trajectory in life mm-hmm. and ministry as Christians, as evangelicals, as being in a pastoral ministry, that the Lord had something different in store for us. H- how did you experience that? Like when we kind of started to realize like maybe the Lord m- might have something different in store for us. Do you remember when, because we, we kind of arrived at that moment at the same time. I think it just felt like we were almost growing out of something, like we just weren't fitting in a certain place. We had more, we wanted to almost expand in a sense, like we had more to offer, we were curious about things, and yeah, it felt like kind of going with through the motions and sticking with our normal, what we knew, what we were comfortable with, um, it just felt a little maybe oppressive almost to stay put and not kind of expand. Yeah. It's almost like, I think it's a good way to put it. I, the way I, I described it is like we were planted in a pot and we we needed to be transplanted in some yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. And like just from a spiritual standpoint, I remember the way I felt it is the Lord was preparing us to sort of release us mm-hmm. from where we had been, which was very comfortable and familiar mm-hmm. because it's where we had lived for the first 20 years of our relationship. It's where I grew up. And we didn't necessarily anticipate it was going to be a move out to Utah. No. As a matter of fact, we had no intention at that point of 
even doing an, anything in an interfaith space, let alone in some sort of interfaith interaction with Latter-day Saints. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even on the radar yet. Mm-hmm. But we took a trip out to the national parks in June of 2020, and that was the first time that we had ever come out to Salt Lake City, and we were made aware of the Latter-day Saint presence in Utah. Like, I knew there were Latter-day Saints out here. I knew the church operated out here. I didn't realize how much it impacted and actually set the culture, the tone of the culture. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like when we came out here, we were like in love at first sight and like we wanted to move out to Utah or get involved in interfaith dialogue. But as we returned home over the next year or two, the Lord over a series of months and just various life events Mm -hmm. started to make it clear that this was a space that he was inviting us into. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's really important to Joy and myself is to try to always look for opportunities to engage with life, with relationships, with what we're feeling in a way that is honest. And something that that can be a little bit difficult because, for example, the trajectory that we were on seemed very predictable. And almost like there, there's a certain element to that when you put it in a community setting, like in a church setting or religious setting, where you're fulfilling the expectations of the people around you to stay on a certain path. So as we began to sort of walk off of a more predictable path in ministry and life and all that other stuff, we were feeling this freedom to kind of be more honest about what we felt drawn to do and how we felt that were wired in a certain way that might not necessarily be best served in that predictable path or on that in that predictable mode of pastoral. Now ministry. we're fulfilling no one's expectations. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are we are well off we are off roading right now. <laughs> but that was a really important thing for us. We were walking through some other life situations and just in a place where we were feeling that it was necessary for us to begin approaching life with honesty and courage, as opposed to just kind of falling in line with what is predictable and comfortable. And that's a little bit more of what was going on behind the scenes, like even within a marriage or within a family or within a life calling. And I remember when I I then started to come up with this idea for Hello Saints as a pastor who has a background in video production and has this newfound interest in this dynamic fascinating, complex culture of what at the time I would have called Mormonism and, you know, the the faith heritage in Utah, I began to conceptualize this idea for this YouTube channel. What were your initial thoughts whenever I started to talk about this idea for this YouTube channel? Well, um, I think I was curious... <laughs> about what was making you so curious about it. Um, You were kind of a few steps ahead of me in like pursuing and seeking to understand. And um, in you just like had a passion there. So I think I was surprised, but I also was recognizing that it seemed like you were also stepping into a space where there really wasn't a lot Um, there weren't a lot of voices there already kind of bridging a little bit of a gap between evangelicals and Latter-day Saints and having conversation there. Like there really at the time was not a ton of content around that. And I feel like going both ways for Latter-day Saints, hearing from an evangelical, but even an evangelical understanding Mormonism, Mm -hmm. that wasn't something that was common. Yeah. Yeah. I think, for Christians to, like, learn about that information. Right. So I have to imagine, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, like, when you're maneuvering through life as a couple, especially when you're married, there there are well-worn paths that are usually your options. Like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a pastor. Like, we're going to, like, move here and do something that's more conventional. But this is a very unconventional space. Yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. kind of, like, it's forging a new type of path. Mm-hmm. And... I remember as I was kind of communicating with you this idea, you saw that it could be valuable and interesting, Mm -hmm. but neither one of us had any idea that it would become something that would kind of grip our lives and so significantly impact the trajectory that we're on. And I was initially 
going to launch the channel in November of 2021. I had recorded like six of the videos. Didn't you actually launch it or? I don't think I. You posted something. I posted something that indicated like it's launching in November. That you were launching it, yeah. And you saw that and you're like, time out. Like, (laughs) what are you doing? Have we talked about this? Second of all, November is my crazy month. We have like tons of birthdays and anniversaries and it's holiday season. And so just from a family standpoint, you were like, slow down, pump the brakes. But you also said something else that sticks in my mind at that point that I, I wasn't fully getting, but I'd like you to speak a little bit to, there was another concern or consideration you had about me launching into this endeavor. Just that I thought that it would kind of take off. Is that yeah. what I said? Yeah. Oh, yes. I think it felt just kind of daunting to me and a little scary for me. One, because it is somewhat unpredictable. Like it could go either way, but I think my sense was that the response, because you were stepping into a space that was kind of vacant at the time, like the response was going to be probably larger than you were anticipating. Right. And I, I've i been a part of podcasts and YouTube channels in the past. I kind of know the expected um, performance of content creation. And I, I was putting my professional brain on and being like, well, I don't, I don't think so. Like this is a passion side project. I don't, it's, if it does take off, it's going to take some time, but I would like to say in front of everybody on YouTube, you were right. Like, thank you. I had no idea that, and it's not really, it's not even a pat on the back. No, it's more of a validating reality that, something that I was feeling drawn into, one, um, has been needed. Mm -hmm. A a safer type of conversation, specifically when it comes to Latter-day Saints and evangelicals. But also I think the bigger picture too, I think just from a spiritual standpoint, like the Lord has known what he's been doing to invite us into this space and Mm -hmm. to um, bring it into the consciousness and the conversation of so many people that feel that this is a, a good thing and um, I'm really grateful that the Lord used you to kind of say, you might not be seeing everything clearly right now, so let's pause this and, and reapproach it. So I ended up launching it in March of 2022, and since then, it's sort of taken off. Yeah. And as you began to sort of watch it take off. You were then entering into my world in a sense of what I had been learning because that's what Hello Saints videos are. It's sort of me journeying and articulating and presenting what I'm learning. How did you kind of, what was that intake for you as you were sort of watching some of the videos? Well, two things. One, I liked seeing you doing that only because something about it kind of made sense, even though this was like out of the box and unexpected. Like, I also feel like you're really gifted and you can do a lot of things. You can do a lot of things really well. And so this was kind of combining a lot of different things that you um, are passionate about and interested in and good at, like not just theology and your faith, but also history and Um, obviously you're creating content and doing video and you're just like able to use a lot of your gifts and skills and do it really naturally. So I think I was honestly kind of impressed with like, wow, you just like pulled that out of nowhere. (laughs) Like you're just now doing this and you're doing it well. It looks like you've been doing it, doing it forever. Um, so I, I, as far as the actual content goes and what, what I was learning through you and what you were creating. Like, um, I found it just really helpful. I mean, informative and you piece things together in a way that's like easy to follow and easy to understand. And, um, from my perspective as an evangelical, I imagine a lot of Christians don't know that information either. And so from both angles, from both perspectives, I just see the benefit of that information Mm -hmm. and making that connection and, And kind of, um, what's the word, distinguishing differences Mm -hmm. and similarities and being able to have conversation and press into areas that I think typically would make people feel uncomfortable, make a Christian feel uncomfortable to even ask questions or even allow room for there to be explanation about certain things that I think people just off the bat want to judge or Mm -hmm. disagree with. Or or, dismiss. Or dismiss, yeah. Um, And so... Yeah, you were approaching something and making it not feel threatening 
for two different groups. Yeah. And that's sort of been the aspect of Hello Saints that I think has been intriguing to people because I'm venturing into the space that typically makes people nervous f- for good reason, because, and this gets more into what I've talked about before, that there's just, there's always been such a hostile or contentious posture between Latter-day Saints and evangelicals. And I don't even necessarily need to get into on whose fault it is. It's just the way it's been historically. And where we like demonize each other. Yeah. And, and one way that I, I typically put it is when we look at another faith group, we kind of can just judge everybody within that faith group in this sort of monolithic idea of what they are. Like, here's an event, here's what the evangelicals are, here's what they are all about. Right. And when you do that, you miss the people. So the same thing with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You would, so oftentimes people will just label like, here is, and pardon the term, but it's how it's talked about outside of the church, this is the Mormon church. This is what they're all about, and it's kind of filed away that way. And what I found is moving beyond that the, the edifice of our impressions or perceptions and getting into conversations with people, that that's where there's just such meaningful connections that we can make and specifically in an area that is important to all of us in that spiritual reality and the faith space in our need for a savior and who the savior is and and what is truth like these are the questions that are quintessential to any human re- right. regardless of faith group because they drive at our greatest thoughts about meaning and purpose and origin and destiny like yeah so and somehow we like yeah, I th- I think I've seen it, you know, in our circles, maybe towards Latter Day Saints. In some ways, like we feel justified, and I'm speaking, I'm generalizing, but the pockets of people that want to be judgmental or whatever towards this other faith over here that they don't understand, we prioritize a passion for our faith and our God, and somehow at the same time we're dehumanizing these other people over here, which. And for me, totally misses the point and misses our faith and misses Jesus. Yeah. So I appreciate that this has like allowed room to be made to like treat one another with dignity. Yeah. I ran across an uh, Instagram reel released yesterday by the Latter day Saint channel, Saints Unscripted. And my buddy, David Snell, was being really honest, and I appreciated it. He's being pretty vulnerable, actually, about a struggle that he has with the regard that a lot of mainstream Christians or evangelicals have toward Latter-day Saints, Mm -hmm. and how we can so easily, the way he put it is, casually condemn one another, Mm -hmm. where, oh, you're part of this group? Well, you're going to hell. Right. Or you're part of this group, well, you've got it wrong. Right. And this is not about sidestepping important issues where we disagree or see things differently. But when we are so quick, to borrow his term, casually condemn or casually dismiss one mm-hmm. another, I think you said it perfectly, that actually misses the heart of Christianity. It misses mm-hmm. the heart of the gospel. It misses the mission of Jesus. And that's why one of the passages of Scripture that I'm constantly drawn back to as I'm considering this approach with Hello Saints is in John chapter 4, where Jesus encounters a woman at the well, Mm -hmm. where he's doing something a bit provocative when his disciples leave, engaging with a woman, let alone a Samaritan who had different religious convictions. Mm -hmm. And even an individual where he is this esteemed rabbi And she is a woman who evidently has a sordid past, we come to find out. None of those things disqualified that opportunity from being a moment that he wanted to engage the person. Right. And it's a beautiful encounter Mm -hmm. because there's honesty Mm -hmm. and there is a distinction in belief and there is hard conversation about who she is and her past And yet, he creates a safe space for her to engage with him and for him... And really to get to the heart. To get to the heart Mm -hmm. of what she's desiring, what she needs, and who he is and how he can meet that need. That's where I think whether 
an evangelical viewing Latter-day Saints as a Samaritan or Latter-day Saints viewing an evangelical as a Samaritan. That's, I feel like, where we're starting to get it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings it back to even this approach that we have been learning to take just with life in general that has deeply informed this approach on Hello Saints. And it's tied to something that I really value before the Lord that He's blessed me with by having you in my life. Uh And that is, you have uh, not only a degree in professional counseling, but you're wired quite intrinsically to be a very emotionally aware Mm -hmm. person. Sometimes I sit back and I marvel when I watch you engage with people and when I see you following through on certain passions or when you kind of put yourself out there to pursue things, you do it in a very honest way. And to me, that comes back to a what I would define as an emotionally healthy approach to a lot of what you do, which I think is necessary, especially in the counseling world. That's sweet. So, so to that point, I mean, I'm not saying that you're necessarily going to be like the authority on yeah, this I'm topic. Yeah, no, I'm no expert. But how do you define what emotional health is or what being emotionally healthy looks like? I mean, I th- I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of health is I, th- I picture almost like um, almost a bandwidth mm. for like good emotions, negative emotions, like there being both, but having almost a resilience and like being able to make room for both and like maintaining something within that. And what I've learned through your demonstration of that, and as you, you've always rallied around that, even in our marriage for allowing that bandwidth to exist, where maybe in other relational contexts, you're told that certain emotions are bad and certain emotions are good. And you should try to do away with bad emotions and only focus on good emotions. Well, and I can't, I mean, I feel like some of, some of that has even been new for me, even as I've untangled some of my theology from some of my emotional health. I think that I, even just over the last few years have been healing in regard to the ways that I kind of was taught. I think it was somewhat cultural even within Christian culture, but maybe even just like the era I grew up in. I don't know. I think it's both combined, but where almost like repressing certain emotions or bypassing certain emotions. I mean, I could come up with a whole list of scriptures that justify that and that give me grounds to to choose that and to do that and to feel like that's actually the holy, correct thing to do. And I almost feel like these last few years, the healing has actually been really painful, but it has caused me to have to go back and almost feel things that I didn't let myself Mm. feel. And in allowing myself to feel that, then I'm able to almost organize those things and make sense of those things and put some of those things to rest and just process um, some of that and, and almost connect that more currently to where I am and what I believe and why I believe it or why I don't. Or, um, but I think sitting with uncomfortable feelings and discomfort is, I think that's kind of the sweet spot. Mm. Like, I think that there, if you want to have an analogy of like working out and physical health, like stretching or pushing yourself to a level of discomfort, like you have to do that a bit to like grow and expand and get stronger. You can't be healthy and healthier if you're not practicing Mm. that specifically. So I think some of this conversation is connected to how we sit with discomfort Mm. because it's not always just because we're being respectful in our conversation and we're being curious in our conversation with people that are different from us and believe differently from us where we are over here with different passions, just because we're choosing to be respectful doesn't mean that there's not points where it feels uncomfortable for us or maybe even for them, but we're managing how to 
communicate within that space where we may feel uncomfortable, where we have to choose to let our ego down yeah. and be able to um, embrace one another. So not only like the conversation will naturally challenge parts of our ego that may want to be defensive, but I think also it kind of surfaces ways that we relate to one another out of fear mm. versus love. Yeah. And if you've been watching Hell of Saints for any amount of time, I hope that this gives you insight into an incredibly important dynamic behind the scenes that has contributed to this journey, which is why I'm so glad that we're having this conversation, because everything that you're articulating it fits perfectly within sort of that fabric of what Hello Saints is. It's about a willingness to take an emotionally healthy approach to interfaith dialogue where we can be honest about how we feel about certain things based on belief and culture and all these other things, and that it's safe to be honest. Mm -hmm. That we can, we can, we have it within our ability to provide a safe space for maybe even negative feelings. Yeah. Yeah or negative experiences. And that's incredibly important, especially in religious contexts, because you're not because you're not stating it, but I think it's important to specifically state in any religious context, whether it's evangelical or Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there will always be religious expectations that can encroach on that sense of safety. Uh, and we could get into why that is, because I think it gets into areas of what is right and what is wrong and what is proper or improper. And we so often associate religious experiences or our faith to things that should only be positive. And yet, when you read the Psalms, a lot of it's not positive. There's a lot of lamentation. There's a lot of struggle and suffering and even questioning God. But I think that when we back out of religious expectations, and we just look at ourselves just existentially as beings, even in the context of like a biblical understanding of what God has revealed to us about the human experience, He makes it safe and okay for us to be honest about where we're at and what we're feeling. Well, I think the thing that's interesting about what you're saying is that, you know, the idea behind what you're doing in your channel is that you're an evangelical, you're kind of approaching the Latter-day Saint world with curiosity, but also respect and dignity. So you're dignifying them in their honesty, but like our ability as an individual to also be honest is us choosing to give ourselves dignity. Like mm. we, we matter too, and what we have to say and what we feel and what we think and what we believe and our passions, like that matters just as equally. So we almost can't allow other people that space when we we don't allow ourselves the room for that. Right. And I think that's important because what you're saying there is we can hold mutual dignity, not only for one another, but even for ourselves mm -hmm. without it being fueled by ego or I'm better than you or a prideful, inflated view of ourselves. Or fear. Or out of fear. Yeah. So one of the things that is... Um, that I talk about a lot on other podcasts, I don't think I've ever talked about it on Hello Saints, is there was actually a counseling modality that was one of the main inspirations to the approach that I'm taking as well. And it's, it's all about what we're talking about in this space. And it's the, the counseling modality is called Internal Family Systems or IFS. Mm -hmm. And it's about recognizing that we aren't simple beings. We are complex. Um, there are many parts of us that are always in operation and, and we put on different personalities or different parts of a step forward depending on situations or relationships that we're engaging with. And I think we, when we all stop and think about it, we know that to be true. Like the way that you engage with people at church might be a little bit different than the way you engage with your coworkers or your neighbors or a high school friend. And for better or for worse, it's just common for us to do that. Now, when you get into difficult situations or difficult scenarios of conflict or anxiety or fear, certain parts will step forward. Mm -hmm. And what Internal Family Systems does is rather than taking sort of a shame-based approach mm -hmm. to uncomfortable parts of us that might step forward mm -hmm. and trying to somehow suppress or repress things that we are feeling, 
internal family system says it's okay to be compassionate toward that part that's coming forward, to be curious with that part, Mm -hmm. to figure out what is that part desiring to protect or accomplish, and to sit with that discomfort, Mm -hmm. to learn from it, to process it. Mm -hmm. And when you pivot out of that shame posture... You transform that part. You transform that part because Mm -hmm. it's safe, because you're... You're treating that part of you with dignity. Well, because you also recognize, even if it's responding out of fear or ego or whatever that is, like you recognize that it is actually doing that, ultimately hoping for your good, wanting to protect or wanting to right. help somehow. Um, even if it's having a negative, even if it's presenting in a negative way. Exactly. It's intending something good or that anyone would naturally desire. So this is like IFS, inner family systems, but I kind of always picture that this same system can be like seen on different scales, like and expanded yes. um, in different communities. Yeah. And so um, just in our world at large and like in different communities, different cultures, different religions, like the ways that we battle one another, the ways there's so many differences and like there's groups over here saying this and groups over here, like we are all connected and we're all part of one another. And so our, I don't know, I personally believe like our best thing that we can do is to walk with compassion towards those, especially the parts that are uncomfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. And it begins to make sense then why a light bulb went on for me when I'm researching Latter-day Saint evangelical dialogue online, and I'm primarily seeing highly contentious debates, or even people just yelling at each other, Mm -hmm. or trying to prove each other wrong. And I'm like, this, it doesn't have to be this way. Mm -hmm. And it it was that internal family systems uh, approach that I've experienced, um, that I'm familiar with, that I've even sort of been walked through in therapy myself, that allowed me to say, oh, well, maybe... This can apply, to your point, to this interfaith dialogue. Mm -hmm. We have all these different parts, right? These different religious communities. What if we applied it here? Mm -hmm. And rather than using a critical, shaming, judging posture to go for the takedown, Mm -hmm. we open the door to an empathetic, curious, kind and dignified, respectful conversation. What would be produced? And... As a result, I came up with the tagline that I always use to fight that criticism with curiosity. I mean, truly, we should be doing that with ourselves whenever we're feeling conflicted within ourselves, rather than being critical of ourselves, Mm -hmm. to be curious and dignified and respectful to ourselves. And it just opens up so many more avenues of growth and connectivity that creates new opportunity. And that's what I have been so honored to be a part of with Hello Saints. Um, it, again, this is not necessarily what I thought would be accomplished, but I'm just grateful and humbled that Hello Saints, at least for the time being, is creating a new space for a different kind of conversation. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really hopeful that we can continue to, to have these conversations. And, and one thing that I, the only other thing I really want to make sure I hit on is we're not pursuing this just for the sake of everything feeling good and, and you know, safety for, so that anything goes. Honesty is mm-hmm. still a key ingredient here. Mm-hmm. It's where when we are honest, we don't have to stamp down the discomfort. Mm-hmm. But to your point earlier, we can sit with that discomfort and maybe, just maybe, across faith lines, we can help one another maneuver through that. Even though we might have significantly different, some might even say critically or concerningly different views on things, that doesn't mean that we can't try to maneuver through some of that together. Mm -hmm. And that's what Hello Saints is, Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm hoping it continues to be. Yeah, and I I guess I would just add to that when you were talking about you know, the contentious conversations online when you were looking at just conversation between two different groups, like that's not, that's not a Jesus that I represent or want to be a part of. Like, and I just think 
Jesus is compassion and is not our religion or our laws that we're so like angrily debating with people about. Like that's mm-hmm. that's not Jesus. That's right. religion. Like And we know that within our evangelical context, I can hear people right now saying, Well, yeah, but Paul was screaming in the town square in Ephesus. And sometimes a more direct approach is needed when you're trying to uh, proclaim what you believe to be true. And I think that the greater concern here is that we need to give space for other methods because it seems to have been only been done one way. And that's actually why I'm even starting this podcast is to explore other ways that we can have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have seen emerging as a really valuable way to approach this conversation on Hello Saints is it to be more of a dialogue. And that's what I'm hoping this podcast format can provide, a more conversational, real-time dialogue where we can talk through certain things. So I'm glad that you are on the first podcast to sort of not only give insight into what makes Hello Saints tick, but also just to demonstrate the multiple layers of dynamics of what this conversation can be um, when we invite more people into it. So what you can expect on future episodes of this podcast will be... Street preaching Jeff. (laughs) Not street preaching Jeff. Uh, But bringing in Latter-day Saints to have conversations on specific issues and also other evangelicals, other pastors. I'm sure you're going to be making a lot of appearances because I'm really wanting to continue to bring more of a female voice onto the channel and even to bring more of that female curiosity even into what is the female experience in our respective faith contexts. And as we do that, hopefully we'll continue to just explore other meaningful trailheads for important conversations that we can journey down together as we sort of explore this uncharted territory here. So I want to give a special thanks not only to my amazing wife for being on the podcast and offering her insight. Yes, round of applause. (laughs) But also I want to give a special thanks to Studio in Lehigh. It is the production space that we're in right now. You can check them out at studio.com, but it's studio with two eyes. And while I get a podcasting solution set up for me, they've been uh, hospitable enough to let me come here and record the podcast here for now. And you can just look forward to not only ongoing regular Hello Saints content where I run around with a camera and explore different church sites and church history and do different react videos. But in addition to that, we will be integrating more of this podcast format as we move along here. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. You can like this video and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to this on a podcasting platform, tell your friends about it. Come back for more episodes. If you want to support me on Patreon, feel free to do that. The link is down in the description. Either way, you're welcome to come back to continue to engage in this conversation. So until next time, I'll see you later, saints. <clears throat> hey, <clears throat> all right. No, don't stick your tongue out. It just helps me feel relaxed. Does it? Yeah. Try it. Hello, and welcome to the very first Hello Saints podcast. And this is my wife. Her name is Joy. <laughs> I mean, that's an easy one right there. Yes, my name is Joy. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna get yeah, they're going to get a lot harder. Than Question, you're introducing me. I'll ask you this. My name is Joy, yes. And who are you? (laughs) Here's the mother of my children. Your name is, uh, remind me what your name is. Here we go. What do you, I mean, what do you want me to say? Hello, yes, yes, my name is Joy. (laughs) That is correct. Yes. J O Y. Yeah. (laughs) This is my wife, Joy. Yep. Okay, let's, let's just try this again. Uh, Roll it back. Sometimes I just sit back and I marvel when I watch. Oh, shoot. Light went out. Do not forget where you are in what you're about to say because you were in the middle of a compliment. To me, that comes back to a what I would define as an emotionally healthy approach to a lot of what you do, which I think is necessary, especially in the counseling world. That's sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. That was awkward. (laughs) Do you want to hold my hand? A little bit. 
It just opens up so many more avenues of growth and connectivity and understanding. Connectivity? And understanding. Do you say connectivity? It just felt right. How do you say connectivity? Connectivity. That's what we should say. Yeah. Let me just give myself a warning. Connect. Okay, you ready? Here we go. I mean, maybe the next podcast we could try out that technique, that (laughs) approach. Just the whole podcast. I can just try being a street preacher for a day. Yeah. Yeah. The whole hour. I'm sure that people would really tune in for that. I wouldn't last very long. No. It's not my vibe. I wouldn't enjoy that either. Yeah. Is there anything else before I kind of land the plane? I don't know. You could go back to talking about how you marvel at me. I mean, I could do that all day long. (laughs) Okay. (laughs)